All right, in this video, we're going to talk about hybridization. So uh, the good part is you can get into very complicated uh, quantum mechanics when we talk about hybridization, but we don't really need to. We need to kind of understand the basic gist and be able to tell what atom is hybridized what. So first of all, if you remember, we used to have things for, like this, and we'd say, uh, if that's an orbital, that's an s orbital. And then we have things like this, and we say that's a p orbital. And if you had carbon, you would have an s, and you would have three p's, px, py, and pz. So you have one circle in the middle, then you have a double lobed, you have a double lobed, and then you have a double lobed. And it would look like that. So you would have the x, the y, and the z axis with the double lobes on it, and a circle in the middle, and that is um, the orbitals as they exist in a single atom. The problem is most things we deal with are not single atoms. So if you had something like methane, and so the carbon was actually bonded to four hydrogens, well, you can't believe that one of these would be a circle or a sphere like this S up here, and then the other three would be double lobed. If you had to guess, I would imagine you would guess that all four are going to be equal, and they are. And they're going to be a hybrid, right? A hybrid. A hybrid is when you mix two things and you end up with something completely different. However, they're related to each of the parents. So if you have a pink flower, that may have come from a white and red flower, and therefore it's a hybrid. Uh, hybrid cars use both electric and gas. They're a mix of each and still yet different. So if we look at one of these things, we'll look at the one bond right here. Um, this would be a hybridized orbital or it'd be a hybrid. And the bonding part, if you had an atom here that had a bond, it would have a small lobe on one side and a large lobe on the other. And this would be whether it's bonding or, or a non-bonding pair, the orbital will be a hybrid. So again, it doesn't have to be a bond. It could be a lone pair in a molecule that contains bonds. So this is kind of like the S because it's a big circly area. However, it's kind of like the P because it's double lobed and it's a little bit of each and not exactly like either one. So this is a hybrid. Um, so just be aware that whenever you have any kind of bonds, ones or one bond or more, you're going to have hybridized orbitals, and we will state the hybridization. The hybridization is going to be it's going to be sp hybridized, sp2 hybridized, sp3 hybridized, uh, sp3d, or sometimes I've seen it d, sp3 hybridized. Finally, you can have uh, sp3 d2 hybridized or d2 sp3 hybridized. This seems really confusing, but it's not that bad. Just hold on one second. Here we have a few molecules, and we will talk about hybridization. Now, the hydrogen doesn't have a hybridization because it only has one pair of electrons. So we'll delete all the hydrogens. However, unlike Vesper theory, where only central atoms have shapes and angles. In this case, except for the hydrogen, every atom can have a hybridization. So if we look at this guy right here, the oxygen, the oxygen is going to have two lone pairs and two bonds. So total number of positions sticking out in space are going to be four positions. To make those four positions, you have to combine an S, a P, another P, and another P. And of course, you only have three of these. After P's, we have to use the empty D orbitals, and we'll get to the D's. Well, nobody wants to call this oxygen SPPP -P -P hybridized. So they combine the three P's, and they say this is SP3 hybridized. It's confusing because people see the three, meaning three parts, but it's actually three P's plus the S, so it's four. So how many positions, bonding or non-bonding, sticking out in space, that determines the hybridization. Okay, let's look at this oxygen. You have a double bond, but a double bond is still one bond. So that's one. 
and then you have two lone pairs. That would be three things all day. When you have three positions in space, one there, one there, and one there, we would call this SPP because there's three positions in space. Of course, we're going to do like we did last time and condense it to SP2 hybridized. The carbon has four bonds. Okay, doesn't matter if it's single or triple or whatever else, or four bonds. Four bonds would be three positions in space, and so this can be S. P, 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 or in other words, this is SP3 hybridized. Down the bottom left, we have hydrogen cyanide. So let's look at the carbon first. The carbon has one single bond and one triple bond. That's two bonds and no lone pairs. Two positions in space would be an S and a P, P hybridized. So the carbon is SP hybridized. The nitrogen is also sp hybridized, not because it has to be, but because it has one lone pair, that's one position in space, and one triple bond. So the triple bond is one position, the lone pair is one position, that's two all day, that's sp hybridized for that one as well. Over here, the oxygens are going to be identical to each other. They have one double bond and two lone pairs. That's three positions in space, so the oxygen is going to be sp2 hybridized. Because again, three positions is spp, and we condense it to sp2 hybridized. The carbon. The carbon has two double bonds. That's one bond in one direction and one bond in the other direction. So that will be two positions, so this is going to be sp hybridized for the carbon. We have chlorine on the bottom right. Chlorine is a diatomic molecule. It doesn't have a shape or angle, but each of the chlorines has a hybridization because there's a bond present. Now, they're both exactly the same. There's one bond, so that's one position in space, and three lone pairs or three non-bonding pairs. One bond and three pairs would be four positions in space. These are each sp3 hybridized. If you are given a molecule and ask for hybridization, you need to see the electron dot structure to determine this. If you saw this and said, what is the hybridization? You might think it's sp3 for the selenium, um, but you have to do the dots to figure it out. So for that, we would put down the selenium here. We put down the fluorines all around it. I usually bring in the electrons from the outer guys first. So seven, seven. Seven and seven. Now, for the selenium, you've got to bring in one there, one there, one there, and one there. Those are all bonding positions. That's four. Selenium has six valence electrons, so there you go, is another one. It is much easier to see it in a stick form, although you have to really do the electron dots to determine it carefully. Now, how many? Bonds does it have? Four. That's S and a P and a P and a P. And a lone pair. And there's that's a D. So this is going to be, be DSP3 hybridized. If it had six positions in space, it'd be D2SP3 hybridized. Have the general idea. Again, we have to train our minds to recognize that it's not bonds that we are talking about, but electrons positions in space, electron orbitals in space, that's bonding and non-bonding. So here we have a two zero, that's gonna be SP hybridized. If we have a three O or a two one, either way, that's gonna be also SP2 hybridized. So we have SP2 for this guy, and sp2 for this guy because 3o will be three things and 21 would be three things well the next one a 40 a 31 and a 22 all are going to be four positions in space and therefore they're all sp3 hybridized then you get this big category 50 41 32 and 23 all those add up to be five. Every one of these has five orbital positions in space, and therefore they're going to be sp3d, or your book says dsp3. Just 
should be able to recognize it either way and be okay with it. Five positions, bonding or non-bonding. And remember, double and triples count as a bond. And then six positions to be sp3d2 hybridized or d2 sp3 hybridized. A 5-1 would be six positions. A 4-2 would be six positions. These are also going to be d2 sp3 hybridized. I hope you enjoyed this hybridization video.